All right, we are now re welcome to the evolution meeting, May 26th, 2021. We've just reviewed uh, some metrics that are going to be released. Uh, so I'll take an action item to these two evolution metrics for review. Uh, I'm going to change contributing organizations to in progress. Why? I guess I, get, I have no idea. I have no idea if it's ready for release because I don't, I can't yeah. access it, but we put it under community review. So yeah. I would suggest or maybe leave it there okay. so that I can let's, go let's take, let's put it. it as, let's put it as ready. So, oh, ready. I, yeah, okay. ready is probably, okay. I didn't really, is that, is that a new status? Uh, maybe. Okay. I don't remember having made anything ready before. So what is the, what does the thing, what does the grid say? Oh, it's ready for release. Ah. Yeah. So I ready for it, release is the, st the step before under community review. Yeah, there's another stage of uh, another another status. I, I think uh, ready is probably the uh, the appropriate place for that if, uh, is, if that metric actually exists. And uh, I'm not convinced it actually exists yet. On, we, we now have eight levels. That's three more than the Homeland <laughs> Security alerts used to have yeah it became pretty meaningless living perpetually in orange um okay so moving on i um we can uh i think we've change request commits is actually that's the one we just talked about isn't it and um, no oh that's different no this is this is more specific so the other one is code changes commits yep this is for for change requests this is change request commits so it's commits right. that are attached specifically to pull requests okay well since matthew's here um why don't i um i'll take an action item to draft that because auger produces that and i know exactly how to write that metric and we don't need to do it ourselves, but I think we could. And didn't we decide? Did we decide at in in a previous meeting that we were, or in the last meeting, that we were going to call? Were we going to? At this vague recollection that we decided to merge individual and organizational contribution credit metrics. Yes. To yes. just contribution credit. Yes. Um, okay. All right some parts of my memory are working today and i will share this in the chat just in case you don't have it handy in the minutes um i also suggested a couple of changes after the meeting i didn't know if i was supposed to do that but i did absolutely that <laughs> makes life a whole lot easier um okay so question all right Drupal, for example, is measuring sponsorship. There's an issue card system. Is this, what, is this code contributors? Or, or do you mean code contributions? Well, I think th that that's someone just pasted in notes from a previous oh, like, okay. another meeting. And I think at this point, we can probably delete that bit, that note. Yeah. Uh, OK. I think that was, that okay. was just help there to Very help good. us. Uh, okay, then go ahead, Kevin, delete it. And so how and using what heuristics are credit, are credits given for contributions to an open source project? Um, no. no, I mean, it, this, seems, it seems to me like in, in this, these this are like sub questions almost, I think. Right. I'm going to turn off suggestions for the minute because we're still like, like we can, and this might be what organizational attribution, or is that what you meant? I wrote that. I wrote that last one. Okay. Uh, so I think all, all three of those are attempts at writing the question uh, for this mm -hmm. uh, metric. All right. Uh, I don't know that any of them are quite right yet. Uh, so, so I would, I would say these are, 
these questions are. Uh, Did you want this deleted, Matthew? Well, yeah, I just thought there was a better. Okay, this this better one's better. Okay, visualization. Right. In other words, the last one didn't specifically talk about individual versus organization, or volunteer mm -hmm. versus sponsored. Like those, to me, seem like some of the key aspects of this metric. Yeah. And I like the, I think the language of sponsored. Um, so how in using what heuristics are credits given for contributions to an, is credit given for, con, is credit given sounds right to me? Am I getting hung up? Well, I mean, right now there exist systems Our where credits. people can give oh, yeah. credit right. to, to those who like contribute oh. to an issue. You know, so you could do all kinds of things in a Git repository. It could be, you could, you can do, use it for meetings. You could use it for, you know, events or whatever. Yeah. What this adds is the ability to help distinguish between who's volunteering, who's working as an individual, who's working on behalf of an organization. Right. That, so the, the, I don't, so the ahead, question Kevin. for the, that first one, I'm sorry to uh, talk at yeah. the same time as you. Uh, so the, the the first one is is asking how is credit given by the project, uh, which I don't believe is. I don't believe that's what this metric is. This it's metric. not about how the how it's given. Uh, we're trying to get at who's contributing, right? No, we're trying. These this is actually like fungible in a way. So the credit system in Drupal, and you might have missed this meeting, the, the credit granting system in Drupal to summarize is, is fungible. You can, you, you want to be ranked. I'm not, maybe I'm not, maybe uh, Matthew could explain it more quickly and clearly. It, it allows a person for any time they make a contribution. So let's say you have an issue that had, uh, it's code, it's, it's like us at this event today or something like that. So we, if we just use this as like, let's say the chaos community track contributions by having issues for meetings, the three of us could say we're, we're doing this. So, um, the, what Drupal adds is the ability to say, yes, I attended this meeting. I did. So, um, at, you know, it, for first it's me. I can add that I'm doing it like my, I'm doing this during my work hour and essentially my employer is sponsoring this. Mm -hmm. So that's a separate level of, but I'm also sort of doing this on my own time um, because I work on it in the evening. So I'm also as a volunteer, so it can capture those um, nuances where you don't just assume that somebody works for a company, therefore they're doing it for their company that on some projects I'm doing something for my company. And then the additional thing that we do is you can, like I could say I'm doing this, like if when, when I work on code for the Drupal project, it might be I'm doing this for my employer Lullabot on behalf of a client, Georgia Public Broadcasting. And then then you get this, so, so that, therefore we get this very different view of how the work is getting done and who's sponsoring it. Uh, yeah, I, I was, I've, I've been in the meeting, so I, okay. I was, I was okay, aware of that. Uh, okay. uh, thank you. Thank you for, for, for uh, refreshing, refreshing. Yeah. Uh, but my specific question is, so this metric is about the contribution credit. So the metric is the contribution credit. credit. It's not the method for how the contribution is assigned. If it's the method for how the contribution is assigned, then it's not a, it's not a metric. It's something else. Well, uh, I mean, in, we already, in chaos, that would be an initiative or some sort of tooling. So we uh, already we already have metrics that tell you who did what, basically, and so this is a metric for how do you how does a project give you credit, like recognize you with credit, and so I think that's distinct, right? Kevin? So the so so the metric is what are the methods that projects use to give people credit? Right. Or or is or is the metric contribution credit? Well, there there's a GitHub issue that I linked to that that is about like the specific way that we do this. 
So that's kind of the. Is that in? Yeah, yeah I added that down somewhere. Yep, I found it. So, so, there, so there's room to have the implementation. So we can we can talk about how a project might do that in the, in the implementation. Right. right. However, exactly. the metric itself needs to needs to be above the the method. So it's not yes. it's not yeah. how our project's doing this. It's actually the it's actually the would, the contribution credit is the metric. And then here are some ways that it can happen. Yeah, yeah. I think we could specify uh, a set of parameters, really, that that would go into some. I mean, obviously, there there is x equals one credit, and x is determined by these uh, parameters. You know, and your and your individual project may about you know account for different parameters in different ways. And this is not derivable from widely available tooling currently, though there is an open GitLab issue to see if we can, if it can be incorporated into GitLab because Drupal is moving to GitLab. Yeah, so, I, go ahead, Matt. I was just going to say, I do, I mean, to, to Kevin's point, it's a, it's a good one. I think like the, I would say, I mean, is it useful to have a metric where there aren't actually tools to do it other than in the Drupal project? So that, I mean, that might, I'm not sure the answer to that question, but that's, that is an interesting consideration. I, I would say that all of our first and I would say for the first 18 months of chaos, nearly all of our metrics came from, with the exception of possibly the DNI metrics came from tools that were built generating those metrics. And we reverse engineered them into common definitions. Like that was mm -hmm. probably the first cycle or phase of service that we provided. And since then, we have been developing new metrics, often at the same time as they're being built into tools, or shortly afterwards, they're put into tools like Grimoire Lab and, and Augur. Sweet. Okay. So I, I would say that contribution credit does exist. Uh, in other places as well. I mean, it's it's built into it's built into GitHub and GitLab, right? I mean, there there are all sorts of uh, contribution dashboards where you can see who's the who's the number one contributor in this project, or who has the most activity, or who's who's had the most commits. Uh, and then in in more uh, in formal ways, you know, projects make contributor lists and and put them into text format. Uh, so, so I think contribution credit itself, there, there are ways, there are, there are a lot of different ways that it occurs. So this, I mean, I think the, um, the interesting and I think useful part of what I remember from Matthew's demonstration of Drupal is there, for example, on a pull request, there may be commits from multiple people. There's a point where an individual decides who will actually get credit. So. For, you know, when I do a when I merge a pull request in Augur, I I have a commit of a whole bunch of stuff that's got my name on it. It shows the other commits that are underneath it, but somebody merging in the, in the course of merging that pull request, I believe in Drupal, makes a decision about who gets credit for that work. So I shouldn't get credit for that work. I'm just the maintainer approving the pull request. And it could be the case that there are incidental kinds of commits that I, I'm like, you know, like somebody committed something and then reverted it. And then there's really no contribution to the code. There are like human judgments about what contributions actually warrant credit. I think is that's the person that there's a human part of granting credit that's not entirely Derivable from trace data. Would it be helpful for me just to share my screen and show? Yeah, yeah. Let me. I think if I stop sharing, you should be able to share really easily. Okay. Um, I see your screen. So, like, I'm just going to my Drupal dashboard. Let me just grab something that, let's say, somebody's working on recently. So we're we're there's this new initiative to have a a, um, a new front end theme, and we're adding test coverage. Okay. And we've we like broke it into different parts and then this changed and this is a long issue where lots of people had 
have worked on things, right. including me. Um, and then you get, so you get down to the, like last night mm -hmm. I was just reviewing it, you know, adding a little comment here, but then if you scroll further down, um, there is in the, in addition to the, the, the commit message, you can see who has contributed patches or files or who mm -hmm. has commented on it. Mm -hmm. And then whoever is the person that actually does the commit, like we have this handy little thing that here's our method for saying who has helped. So it, it like it links to the issue and then it you, puts people's username and it has a little description of it. And that changes, you know, to, based on if you check this or not or something like that. Right. But the, the names of the users are included. Yeah. So uh, then so whoever's really actually cool. doing the commit does not get, they, they probably would commit themselves because they did something. But the, but the addition thing is you can see next to each person's name, like mine's actually wrong. It says mtiff at lullabot for Georgia Public Broadcasting. I, I forgot to uncheck that, but that's yeah. the that's the additional thing with this is that you can say they're doing that work for them. This person is doing it as a volunteer, that kind of thing. And there's, where is it that you indicate they're doing it? Oh. So if I go back to here, I can right. say MTIF at organization. I could change that. I could go here and um, remove Georgia Public I Broadcast. See. So, so one of these comments exists for each contribution all the way up the chain. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I think so too. And then, uh, and then we have this additional, I guess I just highlight that, like I'm volunteering on my own time as well. So, so your can, credit can be distributed even you know equally i prefer like in addition to doing this for work i'm also spending yeah. some evenings working on it like i did yesterday so that's 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 the gist of it so it, it, it's it's actually an additional thing that exists underneath um that that uh people can select themselves mm -hmm. so one day i might be doing work for georgia public broadcasting my client <laughs> another day i'm not uh right but i'm also getting help through so so it, it creates this very interesting view where then we mm -hmm. can go back and say where do we have the most people volunteering where do we have the most people getting sponsored how, specifically like how has sponsorship changed over time so I guess if you wanted to share again, you know, go back to that document, that little uh, yeah, oh, yeah. graph is one of many graphs that we've been sharing over the past five or six years that show like a breakdown. Like, so we call, we did, we, I mean, Dries and I just came up with this language where we called purely volunteer, both volunteer and sponsored and then purely sponsored. And we can see like how those things have changed. Uh, and we just, in this graph, just have the last three years. Like, so on the bottom, we can see like purely sponsored work has been increasing, um, but purely volunteer work, you know, did not last year. And we can see those kinds of things, which are kind of interesting. Like it's a much bigger increase. And in, so, so we can look at that and say, oh yeah, more companies are sponsoring or, or maybe more people are using the system. We don't know for sure, but. Yeah, the well, years we've well. we've seen that growth, and that information then gets used to. We do have a leaderboard essentially that takes into account a whole bunch of stuff in addition to this. You know, it also takes into account case studies, but it ranks service agencies on on a page on Drupal.org. So it's uh, it's applying um, human judgment to the um, attribution of credit in in such a manner that somebody like right now the kernel committers just for example look at their rank mm -hmm. and i think it's just by commits uh, so this is markedly more sophisticated and uh, it incorporates human judgment where any straight up metric does not so it's um that's the piece of this that is distinct is that there's a a human being deciding who gets credit for the contribution. And there's also a way for a human to say, I went to this meeting and get some credit, or I led this meetup 
and get some credit. So there so are the, ways the, to get credits for multiple types of contributions. We're just using pull requests here as an example. Yeah, I can share my screen again. Again, if this yeah, is, um, go for it. So the the human component is the the implication or or the uh, I'm sorry the uh, the implementation bit though. The, yeah, this metric really this metric is about though. the it's about the information that's being collected that allows for the implementation. So based on based on what what Matthew has said, the information uh, con the contribution credit metric is it's the the person connected to the activity. It's also the organization that they work for. It it's it's also uh, a couple other pieces of information that you would attach to it. So I. I think it's that it's that third question that we have there right now, and that's what attribution information is collected on a contribution. Mm -hmm. And using that using that attribution information that's collected, you can then have implementations that provide uh, what what Matthew is doing at Drupal, for a, example. A question that's more clear to me is something like, how do we determine? who gets credit for a, well it's um it's a how do we indicate who gets credit for a particular contribution and that, yeah and then we i i think contrib we have a metric that's very general somewhere i think and maybe in common that is contributions that we might I be was able to point to. Yeah, I, I just wanted to point out like something like this is a kind of a different example where, you know, I, I spoke at DrupalCon North America, so I got credited mm -hmm. somewhere on this page. Mm -hmm. There's no code anywhere, but there is, you know, there is credit. So somebody just went through and said at some point, like, you know, M. Tift was a speaker as mm -hmm. well as a couple hundred other people <laughs> yeah and and that's the whole issue so there's there's never actually any, any like um code committed so right. you know or or you know another example would be like i help run that that same olivero ish initiative so like when i fix an issue when i mark it as fixed um i go through and i paste in the meeting notes um this is something I worked on, you know, yesterday. Here's what we discussed. We had, it was a Slack meeting. Uh, and then all of these people just say they're attending. And then when I, when I close it, um, you know, I, these are all the people that were there and it's like, you were there, maybe you didn't talk in the meeting even. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but so, you know, then we, we add that and those people all get a credit. Mm -hmm. So then like, if I go, what, what that leads to then, like part of the usefulness is if you go view somebody's profile and I'll just use mine, I guess, cause that's you're easy. logged in and you're, you're logged in. Yeah. Then you can see like in the past year, you know, I've worked on these 137 issues from various modules, all the projects I've worked on, but then, um, it, you know, that also leads to me, um, like not all of those were for my employer, but, um, that same data. So we have this serve this marketplace page that based on issue credits essentially ranks. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's my employer We're we're like fifth on the list currently, but that changes, but we can see my employer has been credited with 231 issue credits in the last 90 days. And, and then it also takes into account case studies, how many projects, our company supports that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So for 12 years, I, I was actually working on a, like an article to talk about like the history of this page where for a while it was just like a random list, then it was alphabetized. And then like for nine years, you know, like this organization called like one something or other was like on the top of the list. Because <laughs> one is in their name and it came first in the alphabetical order. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so now it's ordered by credit. Now it's ordered by credit. So anyway, I don't know if that helps, but that, 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 that's how I guess I can, I can go back to sharing, but that is like part of the, how this stuff can be used is that 
we you can then take what organizations are contributing the most to a project you know and then if those organizations have a profile again if this this stuff can be on on github or whatever then you can mm -hmm. have you know people that are doing you could just list hosts or you could just you could break down organizations by these different sectors and whatnot so if you want to see what other you know uh, uh, like edu people in education are uh, organizations in the education sector these might be companies that work with companies that do organization then you could find service providers so a company like xyz Ware, which is an interesting case like they were always last on this list <laughs> for many years um so if this you know if github had this in the linux kernel or whoever however that's done had something like this you could get a better sense of who what organizations um and then but that also you can also have like the list of individuals but on drupal.org we've chosen specifically not to do leaderboards <laughs> um and it's just mostly for organizational information so i don't want to just i can talk about this <laughs> for hours uh uh, I, I feel like you guys obviously have good insight. And one of the things that's hardest about hardest, the hardest thing about this particular, uh, feature of Drupal is explaining it to other people. <laughs> uh, it's, they don't... it's really cool though. I, I like it. I like How did it I do uh, try out? My, I, just, I just wrote a question uh, into the sure. document. You can share again that I tr tried to summarize because some projects just like have like the kernels, just like a leaderboard of commits. I don't think I do think they like rule out white space and there's some things like that are they do have some sophisticated algorithms for deciding what to count, but it's entirely commit focused. Yeah. Um, I think Daniel German is the person whose software is widely used. Yeah, I'm like, like one of the things that's most exciting to me about this is being able to put combine this with like all the other things that Augur does mm -hmm. <laughs> to be able to say, in addition to all of the awesome stuff that you guys can interpolate, interpolate from commits, right, adding right. this additional layer to provide additional information. Um, that to me is some of the most exciting stuff because it sort of exponentially gives you a different view into how a project actually keeps moving forward, how it's changing over the years, who's contributing over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 it's, and the, it's, the peer review the aspect, peer review aspect of this is, I think, what's, is, I think what's is very interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, um, that's, that's what distinguishes that's it from just counting, counting, right? Counting, right? Um, yeah. Um, for sure as I'm getting an echo now, an echo and now. everybody's wearing a headphones, everybody's so, wearing I don't know. so I don't know. It's causing that, causing that. Bugs in the, there, there are, there are some there, bugs there are in the some internet bugs the morning. In the internet the morning. <laughs> um, um, well, I mean, what do you think well, of the question, what do you think of the Kevin? Question? Kevin, Matthew, and Matthew. I, I think I still I, think I we think need to focus on the who and not the how. Who and not the how. So so have the word contributors because I do have the they do the word contributors there. Contributors there. Well, so I can I, tell I you that I rewrote. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was oh, just going to say, I can tell you that like the, the the title of the article where we use these data each year that, that we published is called "Who Sponsors Drupal Development." That, that seems like one of the fundamental useful informations about this. Is it volume? Yeah, I, I think, yeah. I think the who, think the who the part is the metric, metric. and the, the, attribute, the attribution or attribution. credit information that is, that's collected along with that who uh, is also part of it. But I think it, it's the who, right? It's your, we want to know who the person is, who they work for, what they contributed, 
uh, and, and possibly other information that would provide different ways of, of uh, providing attribution. Uh, but it, but it does still come down, it comes down, it comes down to the who, right? We're, we're trying to figure out who that person was that did the contribution and who their organization was. Well, and whether or not they, so there's like a person and there's a contribution and then affiliation. So it's, it's like, um, is, there's, there's volunteer, there's sponsored and there's both volunteer and sponsored. So if I'm doing this for, I, I in, I imagine there are cases there that are don't cases that don't involve a client. Yeah. So that would be considered purely sponsored. It would just be that I would be doing it. I would be, I was, I'm being paid to do it, not for any particular client, just it's sponsored. Yeah. I mean, um, I think I would think there's a lot of projects where there aren't clients like in the thinking of the financial yeah, sector yeah. podcast where they're on the chaos cast where they're talking about people in the financial sector. Most of the project is like one company, maybe it's a couple companies, but they were essentially assuming it was always somebody working in the financial industry on a financial open source tool for their company. And like they were sort of even encouraging the opposite of not having volunteer work, getting people to pay. So they would use this very differently where whereas a project like Drupal, like we're glad we have volunteers and people doing this on their own time. And uh, so there are, you know, there are different ways to use this, I would say. Yeah. And some of them yeah. that don't involve clients at all. Some of them that don't involve volunteers at all. But that tells you something, I would say, about a project. Kevin, can you make a comment summarizing what you think this is in the metric? We have about <laughs> two minutes left. And I, I think my, I think, I think my, I think my question that I have right, right below yours, I think kind of sums up uh, what I think the metric is. See, I would say this word is more like, I think this is more like a sign. Um, and probably through or not through a review process because there, it's this human component where, you know, things that are, if we're just counting stuff, things that really aren't contributing get counted. Um, but if we're, someone's reviewing it, then there's a person making a judgment. Like if I put plus one on a pull request, am I making a con, does my comment give me credit for something? Um, if they're counting comments, then technically yes. But if someone's peer reviewing it and saying well, plus one, so what? There can be a decision not to give me credit. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I like that. Um, so the, only, the thing I might change is the, change the word assigned. I might, instead of collected. collected. Hmm. Yeah, I think assigned, assigned, uh, assigned, but also, assigned, uh, but also provided, right? So the because the, right. the flip right. side of that is what information am I giving you that would? Uh, so it's the the information that I'm giving you and the information that you're assigning that you're assigning. Right. Right. It, yeah, there's I'm claiming definitely that aspect claiming that I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Sorry. Right. There, Sorry. There, there's that's all right. There's that aspect of like some people aren't going to want to offer that information in, in our system. And we say, that's fine. You don't have to. So it is people voluntarily saying, yeah, I want to, I'm proud of what I'm doing either for my employer. I'm proud that I'm just a volunteer or whatever. And, and they want to share, but there, you know, I, I have, I've thought about this a lot in terms of like trying to break down what are all the things that exist now. And, you know, I, I do feel like there is a sense of you could call this the how work gets done like we, we can in a git history when i you know if you examine examine git history you can see what work has been done and who has done the work um and there to me one way i have thought about it you can 
maybe this resonates or not is to say how it gets done. I got it done as a volunteer. How did I get this done? I was paid for by my employer. So there's different ways, I guess you could understand what is useful about this. But if you, if you understand who in the broader sense of my client, what, what organizations, which people, which, um, yeah, I guess organizations and organizations and people are contributing. That's what this tells that you don't get elsewhere. That's what we would encourage people to measure, or it could be helpful to measure. And it's the, yeah. And it's the explicit yeah. indication of, of whether or not it's for pay or, or, not, or not, which is, is, is implicitly counted in a lot of systems. Certainly Augur counts implicit organizational affiliation, but we have no way of distinguishing if that specific thing you did on a repository was something you did on your own time, but not for pay. Um, uh, so if, uh, if we changed collected to assigned, does that does that question make more sense to you? Because I'm, I, I think you're right. Assigned is probably a better word than collected. Uh, I don't think that question quite encompasses everything. But I don't know that we can encompass everything in that question. So maybe that's where we, we, we kind of uh, dig deeper in the description. Right. I think I think it's a good question. Oh yeah, I like that specifically adding and people and organizations. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And then we can be and then we can be we can be more specific in the description. I'm just gonna make a note. General, general agreement at end of meeting. Next stop description. Stop description. And Matthew, you're Matthew, welcome to work on this between now and the next for the next um, uh, meeting, or we will pick this. I'm just going to move this to the to the. I can find the evolution. My evolution. Yes. There was no X and Y. And Gonna say for, for just gonna copy this. Uh, declare the meeting over. I'm just gonna put this at the top of the agenda for the next meeting, which is on June something. Kevin, let's see, 31 5 11, June 11, June 11, um, June 9th. The math's terrible. Ninth, yep. Ninth. All right. All right, uh, uh, and I'm just gonna move this, this up here. And, here to the yeah, top. I, I, I think all those objectives all match with that question as well. So I don't, I don't think we need to change a ton in there. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna conclude this meeting uh, a little bit late, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, thank you all very much for helping us get some metrics released today. You're almost in, you know, I think we're getting pretty close on this one. So hopefully next meeting we send her out. Send her out. Thank you. All right. Talk to you.